Even if you're brand new in the crypto space, you've probably been hearing the hype around NFTs since about the beginning of this year. From crypto punks and bored apes to NBA top shots and me bits, celebrities are buying in, artists are making millions, and even teenagers are making six and seven figures flipping these things. You've probably heard people complaining saying, why don't I just right click and save as because it's just a JPEG. But there is a little bit more to NFTs than that and they are an exciting part of crypto right now. So how do you get in on the action? How do you actually buy an NFT, get it in your wallet so you can be part of the movement, be part of these growing communities or simply just to make some money buying and selling, AKA flipping. My name is Brie, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to easily buy NFTs on the popular trading platform, OpenSea. This is a completely beginner friendly tutorial. So if you've never bought crypto, if you've never bought NFTs before, this video is for you. So let's get into it. This first part is really important because there's a few things you need to get in place before you can actually buy an NFT. Namely, you need some ETH and a MetaMask wallet. So before we get into OpenSea, here's a quick rundown of everything you need to do before you buy. The first thing you'll need is some ETH, AKA Ethereum. And if you don't have this yet, you're gonna have to buy that on an exchange like Coinbase or Newton. Newton is the exchange I use. I'm based in Canada. So if you're in Canada as well, that's a great option. But otherwise, something like Coinbase, Binance, any of the big players are a good bet. Once you've done that, you'll also need to open up a MetaMask wallet. This is completely free. You can set one up in a matter of minutes online. And once you have that set up, you want to send your ETH from the exchange over to your MetaMask. And you're going to need to do this because NFTs live on the Ethereum blockchain and you're going to need some ETH to not only purchase the NFTs, but to cover gas fees for those transactions. If you're a little bit confused on any of these steps in this process, check out the cards up here. I've done several videos on how to buy crypto on various platforms, as well as how to get your MetaMask wallet set up. But once you have that ready to go, head on over to OpenSea.io and we can start looking for NFTs. Now, the next step is to find good NFT projects on the platform. And this part is really, really important because as Gary Vee and multiple other experts in this space have said is that 99% of NFT projects today will be worthless. They will go to zero. So if you plan on making money with this, if you plan on holding anything long-term, then you do want to make sure you're picking the best projects. So what are you looking out for when you're picking an NFT project before you buy? Let me pull up OpenSea and we can go through a couple of examples and I'll show you what you should be looking for. All right, so once you're on OpenSea, you can go and explore and you'll find that there are a lot of different NFT projects to choose from. I don't even know how many there are, but there's new ones added every single day and it can be really overwhelming to decide what are good ones, which ones are scams, which ones are worthless. So I wanna talk about the things you should be looking out for when choosing a good project. So let's take a look at the Doodles project. This is a new project that is very popular. Let's see if they live up to the hype. First and foremost, having a blue check is always a good start. Okay, but the blue check doesn't really mean a lot. So how do we know that this is a good project, that this is created by good people with good intentions who are planning on supporting this project long-term, who aren't just going to rug you and make off with a bunch of money for hyping a project that has no value. The first step is you wanna do some background research on the project. So do they have a good community? Do they have a Discord group that is active? Can you ask questions in there? What does their Twitter look like? So for Doodle, I can go over to Twitter. They've got 86,000 followers and I can go and look at their tweets and see, is it just scammy stuff? Are they just pumping the price? Or are they actually having a conversation with their community? Are people responding? Are they commenting? Are they answering questions? And all of those things are good signs when that's happening. If not, that is a big red flag. And the last place is you wanna check out their site. And here you can go and read about the project. You can see what their roadmap is. What is their plan for this long term? Who the founders are? It is a good sign when the founders are not anonymous, though there are good legitimate projects where the founders are anonymous as well. Um, but here you can see they have links to the Twitter profiles of the people behind this. Um, and you can do your background research and see like what they've worked on before. Are they developers that 
have worked on other games? Have they been involved in other big projects? You can just see here the first one, Evan Keast, who came from Kabam Games, Dapper Labs, and CryptoKitties. Dapper Labs and CryptoKitties are both huge in the crypto space and the NFT space. So that is a good sign. And then you see that with some of the other founders as well. Okay, so we've done our background research and this project looks like it's a good one. It looks legit. It looks like the people behind it have good intentions and they have experience running projects like this. So let's go back to OpenSea and see what we can find out from the information available to us here. So the first thing I wanna look at here is the number of owners compared to the number of items. So Doodles has 10,000 items. There's 10,000 of these profile picture NFTs and there are 5.2 thousand owners. So that is about a 50% rate of owners to items. Now, the higher that is, the better because if I have 10,000 items and 10,000 separate owners, that's a different person that owns each NFT. But you start to run into problems if you have a really low percentage of owners to items. So say it was 10,000 items and only 1,000 owners. So that means on average, every owner owns 10 of these NFTs. So that is a more centralized project and you want the NFTs to be distributed over a larger population of people just because when you have a bunch of whales that own all of the NFTs in a project, when very few people control all of the assets, then that's easy to manipulate the price. That's easy to do a rug pull and run off, especially if they decide to sell all of their NFTs at once, dropping the value. So the higher the percentage of owners to items, generally the better. The next number we want to look at is the floor price. So if I click on that, it's going to sort the NFTs in this project by price. So the lowest price first. So floor price is basically the cheapest NFT you can buy at this time. Generally, when you're looking for profitable NFTs to get into, you want to look for floor prices that go up sooner. The lowest price is 2.52. There's one at that, and then it goes up to 2.58 but then there's a couple that are 2.58 before it goes up. So to go up, say 0.1 ETH, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six we need to sell before the price goes up 0.1 ETH. Generally, when you're looking to make money by flipping these guys, you want something that has only a few at the lowest price before the price starts to go up because that means, say I wanna make a 0.1 ETH profit, five of the lowest price of these NFTs you need to sell before the base price is 0.1 ETH higher than it was. So, so let's compare that to another project. If I go on over to Cryptodes and I sort by floor price, okay, the floor price is 3.25 ETH, but then already the first one after that is 3.45 ETH and then 3.49. So this might be a good one to invest in because once I buy this, then the floor price is automatically 3.45. It's already gone up 0.2 ETH, which if we go and look at that, 0.2 ETH right now is over $900. So I could already go and list that right away for the new floor price and make a profit. But gas fees are an issue right now. We'll get into that in a minute, but that is floor price. And the last thing we want to look at on the OpenSea page for a project is the activity tab. So I'm going to go on over to activity. And if you are flipping NFTs, if you are looking to sell this sooner rather than later, then you want to see a lot of activity. So with these doodles, I can see there's been two in the last hour. There's been one an hour ago, three, two hours ago, two, three hours ago. So it's not bad, but it's not moving really quickly. Whereas let's take a look at something else and see if we can find something with better activity. So if I go on over to Cryptodes, I can see, okay, the last one sold seven hours ago, one nine. So these are selling less quickly compared to Doodles. So in this case, a Doodles might be a better option. Basically what you're looking for is you wanna see several traded in the last hour, the last couple of hours, if you're planning on flipping at a higher price. So the more they're being traded, the more demand there is for them and the easier it's gonna be for you to sell them later on. All right, so you've done all your analysis, you've found an NFT that you wanna buy, that's a good investment that you can make money on flipping in the future. So now let's buy one. For the purpose of this video, I've gone and found a different project that is a lot cheaper than Cryptodes or Doodles. The floor price is only 0 0.027, which is I think around $100 or so right now versus 3 ETH, which is what, like 12K? So let's go down here and look at these. Let's start by floor price and say I want to buy one of these guys. Let's see. This one's kind of cute. Maybe I want to buy that for 0 0.03 ETH. So the first thing I'm going to need to do before I can buy is to connect my wallet, connect my MetaMask. So I just gone over here to the wallet button 
and click on MetaMask. And I already have this set up and open in my browser. Um, if you don't have that set up and connected, you're gonna, it's gonna prompt you to log in to type in your pin number. And then once you do that, I can go on over here to buy now. And I wanna click to check this box. I agree to terms of service, confirm checkout. And then that's gonna bring you over to your MetaMask to confirm that transaction. So right now that price is looking, it's gonna cost me $177 but that is just the base price. Then we gotta look at the gas fees. And right now, gas fees are insane. So the estimated gas fees for this right now is showing me at $270, which, oh, $242, it's always changing. And I don't have that much in my wallet right now to cover that, so it's giving me insufficient funds, so I cannot purchase that. But I'm gonna reject if you were gonna go through with this, if you were comfortable with the gas fees, you would confirm and it'll give you the link to the Etherscan page for the transaction, which we'll look at in a second. So let's reject that because I don't have the money to cover the gas fees. But yeah, so say I had actually bought this and confirmed, I gotta wait for that to go through. So, so just to show you what it looks like, when you actually confirm and purchase, you have, you're gonna have to wait for that transaction to be included on the blockchain before it gets validated and the NFT shows up in your wallet. You'll get a link to the Etherscan transaction. So just as an example, here is what the transaction looks like for a transfer of a crypto from one address to another. So you can see that the status here is successful. This happened 82 days ago. The block that it was included in who it was from, who it was to, the price that was paid for it, and the gas fees that were paid for that transaction. But when you get this page for your own transaction, you wanna keep an eye on the status, and once it says success, that should show up in your MetaMask wallet. But once the transaction goes through, you can go and look at your collection under your profile on OpenSea or in your MetaMask, you can also take a look there. Um, I don't have any NFTs in this wallet right now. I, to be honest, I've been waiting for gas fees to come down so I can start dabbling in this a little bit more. But obviously if you don't have several grand to drop in an NFT, paying a couple hundred bucks in gas fees doesn't really make sense. So this definitely can be expensive to get transactions through at the moment, but hopefully fingers crossed that changes in the future. But once you've confirmed the transaction, once it's gone through on the blockchain, it'll show up in your wallet. It'll be there for you to do whatever you want with it, whether you wanna keep it for the long term, sell it, trade it, whatever. That is how you do it. That is how you buy an NFT using OpenSea. Of course, if you wanna get started in trading NFTs, you're gonna need some crypto to fund that. You're gonna need to send some ETH on over to your MetaMask wallet so you can start flipping NFTs. If you're in Canada like me, you can use Newton to buy your crypto. If you use the link in the description below to sign up, you'll get $25 added to your account when you sign up and fund your account with your first $100. Otherwise, if you're based elsewhere in the world, Coinbase is always a solid option. And again, using the link below, you'll get an extra $10 when you sign up and fund your account with your first $100. But that is it for this video, guys. So I just wanna thank you so much for watching, for sticking it out until the end. I truly appreciate all of your support. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and share it with a friend who could also benefit from going down the crypto and NFT rabbit hole. Otherwise, if you're ready to continue on down that crypto rabbit hole yourself, check out one of these videos next. And I will see you guys next time.